Here we go. Whoop. What is going on, doggies? Welcome back to another video. Actually, welcome to a highly, highly requested video on what is this big, beautiful rig here in the background. In today's video, I'm gonna run you through everything we've done from the start to the finish, from the inside to the outside of this car, and show you guys how I've made this 78 Series Land Cruiser into the ultimate off-road touring rig. We've done everything that we wanted to do to this car. Obviously, it's a very personal thing building a car, but this, what I'm gonna show you today is what we've done to make this car our home, our office, our bathroom, our kitchen, this is basically everything. We live out of this car and it is an absolute bloody rig. So I'm gonna run you guys through the whole entire thing, the whole entire build, and show you guys what we've done. Hopefully you guys, maybe if you're building a four-wheel drive, you can learn something from this. If not, you can just get inspiration to get outside and have fun like we do. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a bloody good one. All right, so probably the first thing you'll notice on this car is this large tube deluxe bar from ARB. So this is the large tube deluxe bull bar from ARB. Now this is one of the first things we put on the car and um, it's for a bloody good reason because out here in Australia you get wild kangaroos, wild horses, donkeys, camels, you get stray cattle, stray sheep roaming the streets, especially at night time. We do a lot of night driving. So the first thing I did was chuck on this ARB full bar to protect the front of the car and possibly protect ourselves. But we got the large bar, so I think it's a 60 mil tube up the front there. It's a 47 mil, mil tube down the bottom here. It, it looks mean, it's big, it's tough looking but also it's built super, super bloody strong. Well, we've got a couple of dead bugs on here. Probably should have given the car a bit more of a better clean, but whatever. These spotlights here, these are steady spotlights, and I'm telling you right now, I thought I was gonna need more lights because we do a lot of night driving, but um, these things have been as good as gold. I don't need any more lights. Very happy with these steady spotlights. One thing that just looks really good is that you can change this inside plastic cert to whatever color your car is. So. This car's a sandy torp color. You can get these sandy torp inserts, which just give it, gives it a nice finish off. But the, the performance from these lights is incredible. Big, bright line down the middle of the road, but it also fans out just far enough to see animals coming out of the bush at nighttime. Very, very happy with those lights. And then down here, we have a 12,000 pound Bush Ranger winch on this little flip flop field day number plate, little bracket here. This is pretty, this winch, haven't had the pleasure of using it yet. We haven't really been stuck to use it, but you know, hopefully in the next couple of months, we're gonna be punching north. I wanna get bogged. I wanna have the boat on the back. I wanna pull myself out with this winch. But that's the 12,000 pound Bush Ranger winch with synthetic rope. Hopefully we get to use that bad boy soon. We've got two aerials up here. I'm gonna run you through them a little bit later because they're both very important on this rig. All right, not only does this engine bay house a venomous Jugite snake, probably right now, or it did, it also houses a 4.5 litre V8 turbo diesel engine. And this thing is beautiful, man. What we've done is we've run, we've done a full ECU remap through the engine. So we've got so much more power out of the engine, but we still, we still kept it as reliable as we possibly could. So it's a super reliable engine, but we've got a whole lot more power out of the engine, which is, it's just what I wanted. It's a big, heavy car. We're always got the boat or the tinny on the back. Soggy beaches, boggy sand, this thing just goes like a shower of shit, toe on the boat. Very, very happy with this engine. We've only got the one crank battery in the engine. All the power sources is in, the party is in the back of the car. I'll show you that in a minute. We've got a catch can here, secondary fuel filter. What else have we got? We've got diff, diff breathers. There's probably a whole lot of other stuff in here that I missed, but um, yeah, very, very happy with this engine. It goes incredibly good. It sounds bloody incredibly amazing and um, very, very happy with this 4.5 litre V8 engine. It's a little bit of a beast. All right, let's go around the side and I'm gonna show you something that we use very, very often. That thing there is called a Max Trax table. So if you don't know what Max Trax are, basically these things are gonna get you out of the shit. Basically, I use these things nearly, I don't know, at least once a week. They come in handy so often, especially towing the boat on a sandy beach. You just stick them under your tires, bop, you're just off you go. But they're a little bit of a pain to store. Up on the roof rack, I've got surfboards, we've got solar panels up there. Inside, the car's usually pretty cluttered. So we've got this Max Trax table, and um, I'm telling you right now, this thing is a game changer. Two little, two little um, latches there, that drops down, and you've got this incredibly bloody good table up here. The thing that I like most about this table is the build quality, like this thing, it is built to last. It's super strong. Everything's just made with quality. You got nice steel straps here or steel cables. Everything is just built. Like it's built to last. 
This is from a company called Quick Pitch, and um, it's just a very, very bloody good way to store your max tracks. We use this thing basically every day, filleting fish, barista sessions, cooking dinner, cooking breakfast. This thing comes up and down at least three to four times a day on the side of the road. It's just an incredible, incredibly useful table and incredible place to store those annoying max tracks. Coming around the back of the car, another thing that gets used all the time are these two water containers on the back here, both 20 litre jerry cans, one and two. 20 and 20 equals 40, so we've got 40 litres of water on the back. This is coming off, that pivots off on a little hydraulic arm down the bottom there, and that is secured down there onto the Kmar bar. So these Kmar bars are next level. This thing is solid, solid as a rock. We've got a tow ball down there, 20, 40 litres of drinking water on the back, and on this side we've got our spare tyre. All right, so what we did is we went with the Alu Cab rooftop conversion. Basically what they do is they cut, they cut the original roof off your car and they stick this roof on top of your car. This is really the game changer for us. It's so compact. I've got two surfboards on the top. We've got solar panels up there. I'm gonna pop it open for you now, but this is a real game changer on the car. All right, so this is how simple it is. You got one latch there. Another latch there, you pop them open, push them up. Sah! Look at this, mate. We've got a bedroom. All right, hold up, hold up. Let's do that one more time. It is super satisfying. Ready? All you do to close it is grab this strap, rip him down. Hey! Just like that, the bedroom is away. And then again, to open it, you just push up. Yeah, how bloody good. All right, here we go. Welcome to the cockpit of the cruiser. Quickly run you guys through what I've done in here. We try to make it as comfortable as possible without going too crazy, because there are so many modifications you can do on these 70 series. But straight off the bat, we have the original 70 series seats in the car. What I've done is I've lined those seats with the most incredible bloody seat covers. These are from Black Duck. They're black duck seat covers. They're made right here in Australia. Super strong. I think it's um it's like an army grade canvas. So the Australian army actually use these seat covers. I can't speak highly enough of them. I jump in here with dirty clothes, muddy shorts, and they are just the seats underneath are still brand spanking new. They're bloody good seat covers. I would recommend them to absolutely anybody. The next thing that I can see that we've done in here is this down here. All right, so this center console here, this is from Cruiser Consoles. It is bloody good. You've got the two cup holders there, a nice little square pocket there just to put your odd bits and pieces. It is the perfect height when you're driving just to sit there like that and put your arm there. It's very well made. It's at the perfect height. Coming up here, we've got, what have we got? We've just got a little dash mat organizer there. That actually comes in pretty handy. You've got pens, scissors, good old fashioned toothbrush, wallet, all the stuff goes in there. And then I've got an Alpine head unit, which we've put in as an aftermarket. This has got sort of navigation so you can do maps and see where you go and see where the next fishing destination is this isn't too bad at all the only thing that i'd say about this if i was going to put one in a car i would have the little twisty knob for the volume because this has got a button here and when you're getting flogged on four-wheel drive tracks and you're trying to change the volume it is near on impossible so i'd love to have a little twisty knob if i was to do it again but first world problems mate apart from that it's pretty stock in here we've got a phone holder running the cord through the dash around the back down to the bottom here just don't like that cord flopping around. And then our doors, we got cruiser console door pockets, six inch kicks, kicker um, speakers there. They do the job because usually it comes with these little four inch speakers. So that's more than enough for a bit of a party in the car when we're driving. You got a pocket here to leave all your little love letters for your boyfriends and girlfriends. Coming up here, we've got, these things are a game changing piece of equipment. These one stone armrests incredible mate you can drive along you have your arm there you put your soft drink coffee beer if you want to if you're allowed to but mate they are just really that if you own a 70 series get a set of them that's one of my favorite things in this front here apart from this all right so this is something that gets used very very often you guys would have seen it used in the video when mac 10 was stuck in the car with the snake this is from a company called gme it's a gme xrs connect unit incredible we match that up there with this 
little GME 5 watt handheld unit. So usually when Mac 10's in the car, she'll have this. This is hardwired. I'll take this in my backpack and both of these together, it is with pretty much our communications with each other when we do trips and I go solo and she stays in the car, la di da. But that, it's an epic unit. And the thing that I love about this unit the most is it doesn't have a box. Everything is on that handheld unit right there. So you've got your volume, your channels, your menu. It's got Bluetooth. You can sync it to your phone. You can communicate it to your phone. There's a whole lot of things that this thing can do. Epic units, nice and small. And one of the bloody good things about it is this. There ain't no more of that old school clipping on. This is just a magnet. Boom, magnet on, magnet off. It's so dope. And I like it, it's just a neat cord that just disappears. I've just wired it up so it sort of just disappears into the dash. Under there, it's just a nice, neat cord. All right, so while we're on the topic of that GME radio, which is built into the car, this is the whip that it relies on. This is the aerial for that unit in the car. The thing that I love about this right now is that these are actually interchangeable whips. So right now we're in Western Australia, it's nice and flat. I'm never going up into mountains or going into mountainous sort of terrain. So I'm always running the 6.6 .6 DBI aerial, which is the longer one of the two. Basically what that does is it just gives you like a big beam. It just shoots out a sort of a signal nice and flat and long, and that's perfect for where I am right now because it's big, flat and long. But what's dope is you can undo a grub screw here. You can just unscrew that big 6.6 .6 DBI one, and you can chuck on this little fella here. This is a 2.1 DBI. See, just as easy as that, I've just changed my whips over to a smaller whip. And the 2.1 DBI, what that does, it doesn't shoot out as far, but it sort of shoots up and over. So if I was to go into like more mountainous terrain and I want to use my UHF radio, I'll chuck this little fella on and this will just give me that sort of com communications where it'll roll over and up and over mountains instead of shooting big and long. It's just nice to have that change and it's such an easy way to do it. All it is is a little grub screw down there take one out and you put one in. I reckon it's absolutely bloody genius. Oh, first things first, we've got to take a couple of things out. So this is something that I travel with all the time. It's full of uh, arrows, my bow, bow and arrow, spear gun, all that kind of stuff goes in this bag here. This is just a tube full of fishing rods. Yeah, basically that is just full to the brim with fishing rods. Oh, some of the most comfortable chairs. Don't know if you guys have seen these before, but these ARB chairs, whoo, they are comfort. All right, let's go inside. I just had to spin the car around because that sun was burning my eyes out, but let's enter the back of the troopy. I'll show you guys how I've done this whole entire draw setup and why I've done it this way. So the boys at ProCamp Solution have absolutely nailed this project. One of the best, one of the things that I like about it the most this carpet is actually Velcro stickable. So like everything just sticks onto this carpet. It's epic, look, boom, bug spray, boom. Everything sticks onto that carpet. That's one very handy thing. But basically we have completely done this as a custom setup. I wanted to keep the weight as much to the forward of the car as we put over the axles as we possibly could. So I'll show you guys what we've done up the front to keep the weight forward and all of the lighter things at the back of the car. One of the most important things when I was doing this troopy build was I wanted to be able to, so right now that pop top roof is actually open, but it has two stages. So this is the second, second stage and that second stage is still down. We'll open it up in one second. But what I really wanted was a bench, which I'm sitting on here. I wanted this bench to be able to still where I could sit in the car comfortably. And this is a bench here. So I can do videos, I can edit without that roof being popped up. So this has worked out perfectly. I can just sit here. My head just touches the roof, but it's nothing, it's nothing to stress about. I can bend over here, work on this workbench, which we have up here. So this is usually where we do all of our editing, our videos. We've got power, I'll run you through the power system in a sec, but this is the bench where we work on our videos. This is the bench that I'm currently sitting on now, and um, it just works perfect. But this is gonna open up now. All right, let's turn this from a car into a house. So you got one that opens there, the second one that opens there. Now we're partying, look at this. I can jump in here and not even touch the roof. It's massive in here. So this is now with that pop top completely opened up and it is so spacious in here. Look at this. It's massive in here. So this is basically where me and Mac 10 spend all of our time. 
when it's blowing a gale and sandy and the flies, we just come in here, nice big windows, they don't let any flies in, the sand doesn't come in either. You can fully stand up in here, you can get changed, you can have, you can do what you want in here. It is epic. This little section here actually drops back down and this is somewhere where Mac 10 usually has coffees in the morning. So I'll usually be sitting here having a coffee. Mac 10 will sit there. She's got little views. Well, usually you got views out there of the ocean. That's her own little lounge there. But what you can do is that pops up and we'll spin back around here. Then this drops down and that is our big double bed. So this is a double bed always with mattresses, everything. The pillows don't fit in here, but obviously Here's your blanket, a big soggy mattress. It is it is the game changer. So that's your bed. When you wake up in the morning and you're, you're ready for your coffee, you just push that up and you've got all of this room in here. It's epic. All right, so lately we've had a problem with mice. We've had mice in the car. They somehow climb up into the car and they've been living in the car. They've been eating all of our food. They just destroy everything. So what we've done is We've got these ARB cargo bags. They're just like these heavy duty, beautiful canvas. They've sort of like got straps on each side where you can carry it around. But this has stopped our mice problem or mouse problem massively. So it's just these bags where we're keeping food, which the mice are eating. So we've got, we've got four of these. That's the ARB cargo. I think that's the small. And then we've got the medium, which is just a big square box like that. Also with dividers inside, that's full of full of food and all different bits of gear. So this keeps the mice out, it keeps the ants out. These keep everything out. We've also got two of the duffel bag style ones in the boat, which are waterproof, dust proof. They're just very, very well made bags. So this is what we're using at the moment to stop the mouse problem that we have in the car. And then um, I think what I'll do is I'll jump out there and I'm gonna bring these from the back all the way through to the front. All right, so this is the draw system that the boys at ProCam Solution have put together and could not be happier. On the, on the driver's side of the car, what we have is, this is where we keep our clothing. So it's these lockable, epic, lockable latches in there. This is where I keep my clothes and my laptop goes in there. Close it, that gets locked up. Mac 10, she has her own little drawer here. She's got clothing in there. Again, lockable. These are on magnets, these two bottom ones. So these pull out. More of Mac 10's clothes there. And this is just where I keep computer gear and um, hard drives and all that sort of stuff in that bottom drawer there. On the passenger side of the car, we have one massive unit which runs all the way to the passenger's door. Comes down here. If you flip this little side section open there, that is multiple. We've got so much storage. These little legs actually pull out, pull back in. We've got an ARB twin air compressor there, which is mounted to the side. There's a lot of storage and stuff up there. There's a 50 litre water tank up behind Mac 10's chair. I'll show you that in a second. But this is really good. It's such just a smart area to use for storage. So that goes there. All right, so this passenger side draw system, what it does is it runs the whole way up until it hits that massive water tank, which is behind Mac 10's seat. So the bottom drawer is basically a drawer where I just keep tools, knives, all that kind of stuff. It is a massive long drawer. So originally when I was going to build this drawer system, we were going to make this one big deep drawer and I am super stoked after a conversation with the boys at ProCam Solution, I am super stoked that we went with this idea. So what we've got is we've got this one drawer, which is 100 mil deep and then the top drawer, which is 150 mil deep. So this bottom drawer basically just holds all of my junk in here. So we've got filleting knives, we've got all the spare arrows for the bow, we've got the decompression valves from ARB, got our knives that we use every day, surfing fins, just, and then you got this, which is like a slide along table. And then down the back, little portable shovel, sun cream, AIB snatch strap, shackles. That's pretty much what this drawer does. And it's just, it is just a really, really handy, small, shallow drawer, which holds a lot of stuff. This top drawer is usually our food drawer. So we've just got a couple of bananas, you know, this is just a food drawer. Don't leave home without this thing. Dog and gun coffee, the best. But this is basically just a food drawer. Camp oven, that's all the food. This is where the mouse has been eating all of our food. But this is basically our food drawer. Another thing that's very handy is we've actually made access to that top food drawer from inside the car. So instead of having to pull the drawer in and out, we can stand inside the car with the back doors shut 
and we can access our food either from there or we can come up here and we can access our food also from there. So you don't have to get out of the car to open the drawers. That has actually been a game changer. We use this all the time. And then coming up here underneath this seat, there's a big dirty 50 or 60 litre water tank. And then in here we have even more storage. So this is above the water tank. We've got wetsuits, Mucky's jumper, more dog and gun coffee, a little bit of bog roll, a couple of gas bottles. There's a heap of stuff that fits in this little compartment and that packs away nicely just like that. All right, so here's that water container that I was talking about behind the passenger seat. Pretty sure it's a 50 litre water container. It is solid, it holds a lot of water. We've got a little water gauge there to tell us how full it is. This hose, this hose will come all the way outside if you want to do whatever you want with there. Here's the fill point, just unscrew that, fill it up. That's your breather, but that's a massive water tank there which is connected to a pump. So here, we've got a little hose. All we do is plug that water into that water one there. We press that water button. You can hear that pump priming up and we've got water. Look at that, mate. We've got a shower. That's 100% drinkable water. A lot of pressure there. And that's coming out of that little thing there. You just flick it off. No water. Flick it on. Boom. We've got water. Shower. Wash all your stuff down. It is bloody good. So next to the water outlet, we have an air outlet. So in here is that twin AOB air compressor. What we do is we'll grab our air hose, plug that in, hit compressor. You can hear that compressor charging up this. And now that, that hose is fully full of air and we're ready to pump up all of our tires on our car and our boat. Super easy way to pump up your tires. And that little twin air compressor from ARB absolutely pumps, man. This is a very simple unit to pump up your tires. It's so good. All right, now we're gonna dig in to something that makes the car so bloody epic and that is the power system. So basically, this whole entire car is powered by Red Arc and um, we can literally live off grid forever with the way we've set this car up and I'll show you why. So down here, we've got a Red Arc Red Vision screen. So it shows we've got 99% full battery, 28 days of battery power. We've got 20 volts of um, solar going in. So up on top of the roof there, we've got two 120 watt solar panels, which are up on top of the pop top roof. And then as we come back into the car, what we've got down here is the Red Arc Manager 30. So that's very neatly bolted up here out of the way. Coming into this little cubby house down here, the boys at ProCamp Solution absolutely nailed this. They've put the, this is a 2000 watt Red Arc inverter. So this thing can give us power. We can power basically anything out in the bush. We can run power tools, basically anything. So they've tucked that under there nice and neatly. And then I've got all my tools and stuff which are stashed, stashed under there. Up here, we've got the Dometic FCS fridge, CFX fridge, sorry, but we've got a fridge on that side, a freezer on that side. This thing hasn't, hasn't faulted us yet, it's pretty good. But what the best thing is, under the fridge, there's another void, and under that fridge, we've got two 200 amp hour lithium Red Arc batteries. So there is a massive amount of battery power sitting underneath that fridge, which is basically powering us forever. All right, I wanna show you why this Red Arc power system in this car is so bloody good. Now, this here, if you don't know what, if you don't know what this alien looking thing is, this is actually an air fryer, so it's like an oven. Put food in there, you chuck it in there, boom, your food's done. It's so simple. Usually you'd have this in a house, but we can run this in our car. So what I'm gonna do is grab this plug. We're gonna plug it in over here. Boom, we have full on power. Now, I have never drained the batteries on this car less than 50%, so they've always been above 50%. What we'll do is we'll grab out some very beautiful, freshly caught fish. We'll grab this massive, look at this. I guarantee you, you're not gonna see fish that beautiful, fresh or white anywhere in your closest supermarket. What we'll do is bang that in there. Little bit of salt, salt and pepper. This is where having this power system in the car is a game changer because Nowhere else you'd be able to run an air fryer in a car. We can run, Mac 10 has got a neutral bullet. It's just bloody incredible. Look, we're gonna slap that in there. Turn it on, turn it on. And we are cooking fish in an oven in the bush in a troopy. That is just, that's just ridiculous. Hey, just cause we're cooking fish doesn't mean this video is over. 
There are some very, very important and epic things I still want to show you guys. If you are going to build a car like this, or if you're interested in cars, we have a Wi-Fi system where we can just get Wi-Fi stronger in the bush, which is epic. And um, I've got to thank the guys at Klarman Automotive Solutions for all of the wiring in this car. They did a bloody good job. We'll start off up here. These lights up here, National Lunar, not, lash, blibbidi, National Lunar lights are incredible. You just tap them. So it's got an orange setting. So that orange light obviously keeps away midges and bugs at night. Or you can just punch it, hold it down again. And then you get this extremely, that at nighttime, that is a bloody big bright light all the way out and around here. We've actually got three of those lights. We've got one up above the air fryer, one here, their provision for windows here. But everything I've showed you guys, the Manager 30, the inverter, the batteries under the fridge, the air compressor, the pump, this red arc screen, the solar panels up on the roof. These boys here at Klarman Automotive did all the wiring and I couldn't have been happier with the job they did. Not only that, they're a bunch of bloody legends. So I want to show you something that they did at the front and I want to show you how we get generate a lot more phone reception while we're out in the bush. So another thing that the boys wired up for me is this. Now this is called a Cellfi Go unit. Now this is a game changer for me and Mac 10 when we're out here in the wide, wide bush. It is actually what it does, it's a phone booster. So that secondary aerial, where's that GME aerial? That secondary aerial there, what it does is that shoots up a signal, it grabs phone reception, it sucks it in, draws it down the wires, it comes through this little machine here, and then we've got another, oh, there's another little aerial there. But this reset, what this basically does is this gives us phone reception when we're in the middle of nowhere. So when you've got one bar of 3G, That'll turn it into working phone reception. And I tell you right now, we have used this thing and it works like a dream. So that's how we keep all of our um, up videos uploaded in the bush. We use this little sucker here. All right, now this thing is bloody interesting. This is basically the heart and soul of my whole entire electrical system. The boys at Klarman, they actually make this Egon hub. They make it here in Western Australia. And this is where everything runs through. So I don't have a fuse board anywhere else except for here. So every single thing that you've seen today on this video runs through this fuse board. So each fuse has its own little red light. So let's say the fridge blows, there'll just be a simple little red light that comes on and I'll know exactly what fuse I need to pull out, brief set the fuse and that is, it's as simple as that. It's a super neat way of doing a wiring system like this. And look at that, it is just so beautifully put behind my chair. You wouldn't even know it's there. One thing I love about it, it's made here in Perth, in Western Australia. The boys are legends and it looks super neat. Like, have a look at that. Look at this fish. This air fryer cooks, cooks fish incredibly good. Look at that. That's a beautiful bit of fish. Oh, yeah. That is so good. This little section down here. Mmm. That's delicious. There are so many things I can show you guys, like it's never ending. This little section down here, this is obviously where we can put our C drive cords, our cords, this shows a voltage meter. This is where we, this is where we charge our GoPro batteries. We can plug a cigarette lighter into there if we want to charge something, this all charging stations. We've got four chargers along here. Obviously that's where the air fryer is plugged into. The, um, this actual, Alia cab roof section it comes with these extremely bright lights two stage lights it also comes with this epic overhead compartment see it's like so much storage in there that's actually a bloody good thing there i just made a very basic hat strap we just got elastic band wrapped it around the whole entire bit of wood and that holds our hats on there nice and beautiful they don't go anywhere when we're full driving i never would have seen the day when i'm out in the bush and i'm cooking food in an air fryer that's a household appliance and we're running it in the back of the troopy in the bush. It's a game changer. It honestly is a game changer. We could have coffee machines, not that I will, but we could have coffee machines. Mac 10's got a Nutra bullet. She makes like fresh juices out in the bush. This Red Arc system is honestly, it's the powerhouse. It's, it's seriously incredible. The boys who wired it up, Klarman, they've got a YouTube channel. You can go check them out. I'm going to link everyone who I found in this car build in the description of this video because it took me a long time to find people, to, the good people to build this car. So hopefully it helps you guys out a little bit quicker. All the links will be in the description. Klarman have their YouTube channel. They've got another shop where you can buy products, which is called Perth Auto Pro, I think that is. It's going to be in the link in the description anyway. There's one thing I didn't show you guys, which is pretty bloody dope. 
the floor of the troopy actually pulls out. So that's the floor, and then you can flip it up like that. You can slide that up on top there, and then that makes a big, mass massive bedroom up top. So if you don't want to sleep in the pop top for some reason, you can keep the pop top shut and you've got a bed there when you wake up in the morning. All you do is you flip your floor down, slide your floor back in there, and then you've got your walkway access. How bloody good. I reckon it's time for a feed of this fish because I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, and um, it's bloody hot out here. Well, I reckon I've just about touched base on majority. I don't know, I've probably forgotten something, you know. Probably guaranteed forgot something, but you know what? I'm gonna do a Q&A on Instagram. So make sure you jump on over to my Instagram. I'll leave the handle here. Jump on over to just, just punch in field days on Instagram, you'll find me. I'll do a Q&A over there if you guys have any more questions on the Troopy, but basically that is it, man. This is how we've built the car. This is how we wanted to build it. And um, we are very, very happy with the way that it's been traveling so far. It's just, it is honestly, it's, it's a home on wheels. It's so, so dope. Literally, this is what our lives look like. I sit here, film videos, then I'll just sit here in the bush. I'll edit videos on our little workbench here. A, a car covered in flies, sweaty as hell. That's our life. Anyway, doggies, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to drop links to each and every one of those people I spoke about in the description of the video so you guys can go check it out. Hopefully, that makes your little car building journey a little bit easier because for me, I had to go and search for these people where now you can just go find them in the link of this description. Thank you so much for watching. Much love and... Um, I'll see you guys on the next adventure in this exact troopy. Yeah, doggies. Much love. Soop. Hi.